Hello there and a warm welcome to Super Eye, your television program that beams a such light on the ease of the society. I am Adenike Wue Ajiboy. Today on the program, we want to look at the deadline for the withdrawal of the exchange of the old Naira notes to the new Naira notes. Uh, of course, before now, the Central Bank of Nigeria had announced that this date remains sacrosanct, meaning that by January 31st, all Nigerians should have, um, you know, forgotten about the old Naira notes of 100 uh, of 1,500 and 200 Naira notes. But we all want to look at the projections. What are the likely challenges uh, that is, um, of course, likely to surface? Uh, this is our concern because as it stands, many Nigerians are saying that these money are not you know, readily available. While some have seen it, others are yet to have seen these um, Naira notes. Uh, it is against this backdrop that um, Super Eye went on the street to fill the polls of Nigerians in regards to uh, this money. How many Nigerians have even seen it? And uh, this money, are they even available at uh, the counters when you get to the bank? Uh, well, let's quickly take a listen to what uh, Nigerians are saying. A cross section of Nigerians uh, gave their reaction in regards to the availability, acceptability, and what they make out of these new Naira news. Let's quickly take a listen, after which I will be introducing my guests. Well, I think uh, it is not late that it's coming at this time. It depends on what the government in power is seeing. If they discover that some money is being stored somewhere and they don't want to bring it out, causing more problems, then it's a good decision on the part of the government. Yes, I've seen the 1,000 notes. I think uh, a week before last, I saw it. So how do you see the money? Uh, looking at the money, physically, it looks bright, it looks it look good, but uh, and the aspect of quality, we won't really need to make use of it and uh, maybe stay with it for some time. Maybe wash your dress with it to know whether it will squeeze or it will lose quality. But uh, I think uh, some week back, I read about the lady that got a piece of it, uh, washed her dress with it, and she found out that the quality reduced drastically. The money becomes so, so squeezed and the quality reduced. So for me, I've not really, I've not really tested that. It's just what I read on the net. But looking at the face, looking at the face physically, physically, it never looked like something that would be durable. Looking at the texture, physically, it looks like something that will bleach when waters enter. So I believe the quality is a bit low. It's a bit low. It's, uh, every decision taken by government, they don't just take it. They plan. They plan for it and uh, they know the outcome. They know the, the decision they took. Yeah, I think they have analyzed before coming out to bring out uh, new Nara notes. Maybe to curb some uh, circumstances and situation. We all know what is what is obtainable in Nigeria. And we all know maybe election is coming up. And also, like what I read the other time, the, that this currency that uh, is not in the bank, so that it's in individual hand, be controlled by individual. And uh, maybe federal government want to control it in terms of the election. Maybe some people have kept it in the bank to use during the election. Maybe to reduce to reduce the fraudless act in uh, uh, in election grants you understand and uh, to make sure this money circulated in the bank instead of being in each or each, each one pocket or each one about because you can see in the western nation in developed world yes you don't you don't carry you don't, you dare it not to hold much money in your pockets 20,000 30,000 50,000 but Nigeria people hold million in their custody which is not right you know the money should be in the bank what is the sense of going with money when you can easily buy something and transfer money you Problem with me, problem, the problem in Nigeria is, uh, is uh, literacy. It's literacy because uh, maybe some percentage of people cannot even operate for well unless with the aid of their children. And the devastation. 
Hey, she put white on it. Carry white now, put for this man. Carry, we are so white. Carry this money, put. You forget to come out and wash them. Your white don't die, you. Thank you. The money is good. The money is good. It's good. It's good. You like the money? Yeah, yeah, it's what good. What about it's the good. fact that there are lots of fake of the 1,000 naira outside? Mm, no, everything is okay for now. Because I, I, it's okay, but when I hold it, it's okay. And the 500 also is okay. But people say that the fake is out. It's Why not is out. It's, that is lie. There's no fake. I, 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 how, can, how can they do fake? There's no fake. I can't see it. Timo say we see you play and we can't play. Perfect money, we will But I will need the fake money. We told them the color don't change here. We can't change here. The color blue. I just have to say, we want to talk for white. We have to I want to know why I'm come on. But look color that we see, I will like it. No, we want to talk. We have to say, no, 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 no. I will like it. I send you. I want to know why I'm here. I send you. I want to know why I'm here. I need the job. I job. But we need fake money. That's the point. Oh, it's very okay, boy. It's too light. It's not like the, the other one we are spending. So that's what I say about it. There is nothing they can do again when it's the south. We have to be spending it. No, there is no remedy about it. They use money to print it out. So, but have you seen the fake? I've not. The visual aspect of it, to me, is not enticing. I don't like it. The one we had before was colorful and our society this part of the world is filled with stress suffering it is good that when you look at money which you labored for you should have some feeling of um, excitement but this money is looking too dull for my liking that's all i have to say it's fine but the way they are holding it if they did not keep it very well it would tear. they will not be able to spend it because people will be rejecting it so that's why they should keep it very well. Maybe they should find a wallet to keep it so that it will preserve it like the other countries. But, but have you seen the money? Like, do you no. have it? Have you spent it? I've spent it. People collect it from you? They collect it. I, don't, I even collect it myself okay. because I do sell my cash. Well, a cross-section of Nigerians there, and you have heard the views that they have um, expressed. Why some say that, um, or let me say some condemn the color, others say they don't see anything wrong with it. But um, the most important um, uh, aspect here is that um, uh, they are saying that um, the fake of this money is out. So how do we deal with it? Okay, uh, let me introduce my guest right now. I'm now being joined by an economist, um, Austin Adigwe. Austin Adigwe, many thanks for joining us on Super Eye today. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> good, I'm... good morning to you. Okay, um, you heard what Nigerians are, are saying in regards to the new Naira notes, 1,500 and 200. Now, looking at the deadline, because of course uh, the topic today is projections, you know, ahead of the uh, generated first uh, deadline. Do you see this uh, deadline uh, being achieved? Of course. Um, cutting over to the new notes, we don't even generate all the dramas that we see all over the, the place. But I think because CBN did not manage the information properly, you see, when you don't consistently give out the information that people need to run with, okay, you open up the policy to speculations. Mm -hmm. Okay, I had expected that upon the um, rollout of this policy, okay, probably the public affair unit of Central Bank in conjunction with the uh, uh, National Orientation Agency, we consistently push out information, telling people, reminding them, okay, of what they need to do, and even showing them the features of the new notes, mm -hmm. what they should look out for, you know, and all these enlightenment and awareness ought to have been, you know, sustained before this 31st January. Generate. 
ordinarily all these all these uh, issues shouldn't have been coming up. Come on. It's because people don't have information. So you feel that the awareness level is still very low. Very low. Okay. Very low. Okay. Um. Thank you very much, um, Austin Adigre. Well, uh, viewers, let me also uh, um, state here that uh, uh, my second guest I'd like to introduce to you uh, that I have uh, I'm now being joined virtually by Dr. Muda Yusuf. He is the CEO Center for the Promotion of um, a private enterprise, as is CPPE. Hello, Dr. Amuda Yusuf. Hello. Hello, Doc. Hello, Doc. Can you hear me? Okay, I don't know what the challenge is, but uh, maybe we'll go back to Dr. Muda Yusuf. We don't know what the challenge is. Uh, maybe the network is poor or something. Uh, it seems not to, it seems they can't hear me uh, clearly. So now uh, back to you, um, Austin Adigwe. Um, you just said you feel that the awareness is very low. Now let's also look at the availability of this currency. You know, when I went out there to uh, sample the views of Nigerians, uh, a lot of them said they are yet to see the money. Why uh, a few said that they've spent, uh, they've been, uh, they've been given the money and they've seen it. Um, what do you make out of this? Okay, yes. Um, you know, because of the diverse, okay, nature of this country. Uh, the length and breadth that has to be covered. One expect that um, availability may not necessarily be 100 percent. You understand? At the start of this implementation, you would expect some teething challenges, logistics, and so on and so forth. Not holding forth for CBN, but I expect that commercial banks okay, should have taken delivery of these new news. At least, if not for any other thing, begin to uh, make them available via the automated uh, teller machine and uh, so on and so forth. So, in general, it's a good policy. But I'm beginning to have my reservation. Because if it's not properly man managed, if it's not properly handled, we might end up the way India ended up in 2016. So, we <laughs> should be prepared, you know, to pick these issues that are coming from the general public. Mm. because. General acceptability of this particular currency is very important, this key. Mm -hmm. If we don't give adequate information and manage it, availability issue must be resolved Dealt as with. fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So that we don't begin to shoot ourselves in the leg. leg. Okay, I'll come back to you because I would like you to tell us what happened to India in uh, 2016. Yes. Okay, um, Dr. Muda Yusuf, let's uh, get back to Dr. Muda Yusuf. Uh, Dr. Muda Yusuf? Hello, Doc. Hello, Doc. Can you hear us now? Hello, Doc. Okay, viewers. If if you if you if you're watching us, of course, uh, we're trying to get uh, connect with Dr. Muda Yusuf, uh, the CEO of the Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise. And um, right now, it appears uh, it's pretty difficult to join him. But uh, maybe we'll put a call through for us to hear his opinions, his views, and his advice as a key player in the nation's economy. He, he was the former uh, DG of LCCI. Okay, now tell us what happened to India in 2016 that is uh, likely or that you uh, project is likely to happen to Nigeria. Of course, uh, India tried implementation of uh, demonetization, okay, of the high, higher bills, okay. But in the Indian experience, okay, the entire process was rushed and unavail uh, unavailability of the notes okay stretch for too long thereby crippling the economy okay and almost driving them into recession so it was not a good experience and i believe that the monetary authority should have learned from the indian experience okay to know that yes it is good you've redesigned to fight black money it is good you've redesigned to to encourage the banking culture and eventually Okay, create a sound financial system. But you must be prepared 
to go the, the, the whole hall. Okay, this cash should be available. That's one. And two, you must you must back it up with awareness campaign, information. People should get information from CBN. But when CBN is not talking to them, then they restore to all these uh, uh, rumors here and there. And don't also don't also um, forget that not everybody, okay, is is on the same direction with CBN mm -hmm. as far as this is concerned. It's because, especially the illiterates. Uh, yeah, those yes. Well, I wouldn't even say the illiterates. Uh, even the there is there is this uh, elite uh, uh, mm. class of elites conspiracy okay. because they know that the center of corruption, the center of criminality, the center of every illegitimate deal is cash. Mm -hmm. So trying to take cash away from the system just like that. Some people feel a heavy blow on them on their skin, so they must fight back. They must fight back. I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of CBN because CBN has goofed in so many areas. But this policy, they got it right. We all want to run to uh, uh, United States of America. We all like to go to UK, go to European countries. Okay, these are good places to live in. Where standard of living, of course, is uh, significantly appreciable. Mm -hmm. But one thing they all have in common is that they've long moved away from cash economy. They've long moved away. You can't go to UK to, to buy something of like, like two thousand pounds and you pay you pay with cash. You'll be arrested. You'll be talking to the authorities. Okay. Why why you choose to break that on the trail? Mm -hmm. So we must move away from cash. And you see the argument. You see here yeah, National Assembly talking about the uh, mm -hmm. extension, so on and so forth. Exactly. Look, that's that's what look, they look look. Fellow Nigerians, the privileged can never fight for the less privileged. We know that. Mm -hmm. I feel that there are only two ethnic groups in Nigeria, the privileged and the less privileged. It is the duty of the privileged to oppress the less privileged. So we should not so, be carried away when they start telling you that they are fighting for you. So you, what you're insinuating here is what that I'm um, is, the fight of the, or the call by the Senate yes. that um, the deadline should be extended is not really it's, about the people. It's partly because of them, not necessarily because of the people. You see? Because this, of them, how? Can you... Yeah, because uh, let it paint a good picture. Of course, you know that you know Nigeria. That uh, one thing that has painted us so so uh, bad, okay, in the scheme of things, mm -hmm. okay, and in the League of Nations, mm -hmm. is corruption. Corruption is official mm -hmm. in this country. Yes. How do you mean? Corruption is official. <laughs> He's when, not backed by the constitution. When Excuse snake, me. when snake and monkeys. <laughs> When snake and monkeys can swallow millions of yeah, but they are, they are facing their and trials no, in court. No, 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 no. I've I, I not seen any. I've not seen any. Any snake been prosecuted? Or, I've not seen any snake that has been prosecuted snake. for swallowing billions. Of course, they are and individuals. Captain General okay. of this country was able mm. okay, to siphon billions of naira. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that corruption is big business. It's big industry. So the players will fight back because cash is the engine that's the driving force of whatever they do but the, uh, um, you just said uh, they will fight back uh, are you aware that um, okay like um uh, during the week we heard that uh, the, the cbn gov governor is at large or disappeared uh, so to say uh, even permitted to use the word and um, we also realized that he returned back I think precisely on Wednesday, and uh, you know that there's a case already uh, where the DSS are after him, and um, it was ruled in court that um, the DSS were not being, uh, they were being deceitful by not letting Nigerians know that Godwin Emefili is the uh, CBN governor. And how do you now make the difference between this Godwin Emefili and the one that is the CBN governor? And that because he is a key. Um, is a key to the nation's economy, a key player in the nation's economy. They should have, you know, be more clear and uh, should have stated that the Godwin Emir Philly that they are about to get um, arrest a warrant for is the CBN governor, so that uh, the president can give the approval. 
that for them to go that way and that's how that case went so are you trying to say that it is these people who are trying to fight back that all of these um, uh, allegations pointing to the uh, CBN is all about of course, MFLA is not above the law. That is, the central bank governor does not really give him that latitude, you know, okay. to break the law. So if he has any issue, if he has any case to answer, he should go in and answer for it. It's simple. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that because he's implementing one good program. Of course, there are deputy governors, okay, that can carry on with the policy. If he has any case to answer, he should go in for it. It's as simple as that. Nobody's above the law. But what I'm saying is this, eh? again, you begin to look at timing, all right? You begin to look at timing. By the time we build strong institutions and not individuals, it will be very obvious that, look, you can be anything and at the same time be answerable to law. Okay, so if he has done anything wrong, he should go in for it. In short, you could see what has happened between federal government and CBN in the area of ways and means, okay? where CBN was granting the federal government ways and means against the extant laws. Mm. That is enough to charge him, okay? So if he has any question to answer, he should go ahead and answer it. But the uh, demonetization of the old 1,200 and 500 naira notes is a good policy. Nigerians should support it. There, there is no change that will not come at a cost. There will be some distortions here and there. And the policy, of course, over time, will create its own investment. Like people say, in the rural areas, there are no banks. Just watch. Allow this uh, policy to play out. You will see that it will stimulate investment in all those areas that we are looking at today now as not well connected to the internet. Of course, you have US, USSD. Anybody that has any phone doesn't have to be smart. You can use your star, whatever, depending on the bank you're using. The point is that we must make deliberate effort to migrate from this cash economy, okay, to, to cashless. cashless, and then move to credit economy. That's where we should be looking at. That is where we should be aiming at. I have always wondered why every poor nation, if you look at the legal poor nations, they are all cash economies. Look at them. Now look at the league of rich nations, USA, UK, so on and so forth. They are credit economy. My mates in America will probably start using a brand new car the very day he gets a job. All he needs to do is go with his payslip to see. a dealer. And then he strikes a deal, he drives away his car. The first day, if that is what he, 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 he requires. But in Nigeria, it takes you years to save up mm. what you need to even buy a Tokumbo car. Mm -hmm. so that's why, that's why the misery index in those countries are lower than what you have in cash economy. Cash has not helped anybody. It breeds insecurity. You that keeps cash at home, you don't keep cash at home and then go to bed and sleep with your two eyes closed. No. So why do you want to give yourself all this kind of uh, stress? Okay. With time, we will begin to get used to the alternate uh, methods of payment. Okay, um, I would also want you to still um, shed light more on uh, other advantages of um, you know Nigeria advancing to the credit economy, as you have said. But um, however, uh, what do you what do you uh, uh, do you foresee? Uh, the likely challenges that might occur are uh, such that um, this uh, January 31st deadline is met or not met? No, I believe, I believe it will be met because um, whatever, you, whatever you see as money today, mm -hmm. okay, is a creation of the law. So once the regulatory authority says we are withdrawing the legal backing on the old 1,000 naira notes, it becomes mere piece of paper. Okay. So we should understand it from that standpoint. Don't grandstand by saying I will not lodge in the old note, mm -hmm. whatever is going to happen will happen. Mm -hmm. Because come first of February, except otherwise uh, amended, all those old notes 
that are with you currently ceases to be a legal term. becomes ordinary paper. piece of paper. So first of all, lodges in the bank. Then demand from your bank, okay, a functional uh, payment solution. You have internet banking, you have mobile banking, you have USSD. You can also transfer through all these fintech outlets, POS, standard, so on and so forth. Let's let's just let's just begin to imbibe that culture. We need to move away from cash economy. It is so important if we must if we must dream of that level of economic development that we so desire. All right. Um, talking about the need to move beyond the level we are, it's uh, I always say that talk is cheap, and um, strategy is always key, uh, because as it is now, uh, the CBN, uh, uh, the CBN, the Apex Bank said that these monies will be, you know, um, it will be available for, on ATMs and what have you. But as it stands, many Nigerians are yet to get that. We're still getting old news. And we are saying January 31st is the deadline in how many days to go? Do you understand? So I'm afraid that there's every likely tendency that uh, these January 31st uh, uh, deadline might just be a mirage. However, I would want us now to quickly take a listen to these. Um, I spoke with these, um, you, uh, this Yoruba guy or man at Obali Day and um, he made us to understand the um, the uh, the the ways to identify uh, these uh, new naira notes when it is fake and when it is original. So I just want us to quickly um, take a listen to him. After which uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> So about the Tuka, eh, this one are we now? I say I'm going to me. Eh, tell about the one fake one. You need Tuka. I live for me test. I live for you. Yeah, umbo, 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 umbo. Eh, second test I bring you. I'm a test I bring you. I want umbo. I want to hear you umbo. Can you no be say? Um umbo. Government should come up in their game, trying to fight, they should look for a way to stop the flow of the fake money by creating an outstanding feature. Although this one is already out, maybe the next batch they are going to print. They should do, do something that will make it outstanding, that when you look at it, you don't have to struggle to identify the fake and the real. Now, you heard what he said, uh, how you can identify the fake one. He even said that the new one too is the texture, the, the, the uh, note is appealing if you uh, use your spit or you use water, rock water on it, and um, you know, it's just it's peeling. So, what do you make out of this and uh, the quality of this new Naira note? Yeah, so it, it goes back to um, my opening statement okay. that what that young man was trying to explain yes. would have been the duty of CBN Prior. and commercial banks, mm. all right, to do because you know, there, there is no information. No information apart from withdrawal limits, when this uh, old note will cease to be legal tender, when this new note will, just to talk about the cut over, there is no information whatsoever from the authorities on at least the minimal features that Nigerians should look out for. Mm. Actually, on the new note, you have um, enhanced securities, but those securities are not readable. Uh, by your naked eyes. Aye. Okay, so if you put the if you put the currency under a UV light, and mm. of course you know most business don't have, have these. UV lights. Okay, so banks and some organizations that have invested in UV lights will be able to, you know, slide the notes under the UV light and see all the security features. There are security features that you can actually see by men looking at the notes, but that it will peel off, it will do this. Again, these are all what you get 
when the authorities fail to do what they are supposed to do. Mm. You know, by now, they, okay, I mean, we have uh, uh, youth core members that go for the CBA, mm -hmm. right, every Thursday. Mm -hmm. Why can't, Why can't you partner you with them? NYSC? Mm. Partner with them. Give them these new notes. As they're going into those localities, they yeah, will they be enlightening people. This is this is the new note. This is one thousand naira note. This is how the two hundred naira note looks like. Because people are scared now. They are scared. They don't mm. know what to accept, and the banks will tell them this is fake. Mm. And mm. those that don't want this policy to see the light of the day, okay, we have a few day pushing out disinformation mm, out there doing everything to discredit the new notes but in the in 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 in, in the actual sense in the actual sense by whatever standard you should redesign your currency okay at regular intervals so that you kill off these uh, uh, incidents of counterfeiting you kill all these incidents of uh, black monies that are hoarded up it's in the system money and used home. to perpetuate criminal evil, arts. criminal arts. Okay, um, Dr. Adigwe, uh, I'm always uh, very happy when we bring talk heads um, who know their onions. And um, you see, the essence of the program, of course, is to enlighten viewers. Uh, as we look forward to this January 31st uh, deadline, uh, what are... Uh, that what should Nigerians be doing? What should they be doing now uh, at the moment? Okay, the first thing I will say is um, there is the, the, the fear we all um, Vanish. kind of exhibit towards this whole mineral note is on, is on family. There is no need. It's not necessary. Okay? We just need to have the right information. All right, the new, the old notes, take them to your banks, deposit them into your accounts, and you can withdraw from the ATM. You can also withdraw across counter. Now, CBN says your cash withdrawal limit, not the money you have in your account. Mm. You can and do the, transfer the for. As oh, much the as you, you, you like. Mm, sure. You have somebody who wants to pay 50 million, CBN is not saying you cannot achieve that. You can do transfers. But at the cash, the physical cash that should come mm. from your accounts that are linked to your BVN should be 500,000 uh, 500, per week. Has it been increased to 100,000? Which is 2 million. 2 million naira cash as an individual in one month that you can withdraw from your account mm -hmm. okay now for corporate organizations five million now when you when you operate within this level there are no charges attached to it now the five hundred thousand you as you are you are made to withdraw as the maximum okay without charges does not preclude any other amount you feel you can justify that you still need to transact in cash. For example, I can withdraw 500 million in one week. All I need to do is the first 500,000 will not be charged as an individual. The next 4.5 million will be charged 3%. Then you fill out a form with your bank stating the purpose for which the cash is required. As CBN says, present an ID card, your BVN, okay, and then get the bank's management approval. And the five million dollar cash will be paid to you. Hmm. But you know that if the five million naira is going to be used for illegitimate business, you would not want such documentation. Mm -hmm. Because banks are also required to render returns on all those excess withdrawals to the to EFCC, okay, EFCC, to CBN, and to other regulatory bodies. So if it becomes a trend that this person, Austin, is always withdrawing 5 million, 10 million, definitely, definitely it gives the uh, law enforcement agencies, okay, that's 
red flag that look we need to look mm. at what this man is using this huge sum of money for exactly and is that not the scientific way of solving crime fine if i'm using it for legitimate purposes they will come to me or they will invite me and i'll show them this is the reason why i need the cash and this is what i do with the cash there are some uh, exporters for example that go into the villages to buy like cocoa nuts and whatever okay that that business is cash and carry we all know that so if i'm into that kind of business and i need to travel okay to those villages to get my cocoa seed and so on and so forth if i approach my bank and withdraw 20 million then i shouldn't worry because whenever i'm invited i will tell them Yes, I will do the 20 million, and this is the goods I yeah, bought with the 20 million. Exactly. This is the dynamics of my business, and everybody is happy. So, in other, in other words, it would be right for me to say that uh, all of these is just uh, a geared towards transparency and also reducing crime in the society. You. That is just what this is all about. Okay, let's also look at the other side of, uh, of the coin, so to say. You see, uh, you know, a, a lot of people believe that the internet um, uh, service we have here is still quite poor. Now, I'll give you an example. Um, I think it was December, yes. Uh, I think uh, a day to the uh, Christmas, New Year Eve, I went to the supermarket and I went to purchase, uh, I think, Milo milk and all that, and then um, everything cost like 4800 And I transferred at first, but guess what? He didn't get it. I did the second time and I was um, uh, surcharged twice and guess what the money wasn't refunded until I had to go to bank maybe a week after my question is why is it difficult for uh, the banking hall or the banking authorities to be able to get that and then immediately refund the money of course, it happens sometimes, but why does it um, why does it not happen like that all the time? Okay, so there is no system that is foolproof. Okay, um, dispense error will always occur, okay. you know, from time to time because uh, even your GSM phone, at times you might look at it and you see mm -hmm. that the service on the phone has just disappeared. True. Then it comes but back. Until you restart all okay, so, okay. yeah, but so this is even where i had expected nigerians to channel their energy to mm -hmm. which is demand effective services from the, the banks. banks if the switching company is not as effective as uh, this policy expects it to be there is Change. nothing wrong in bringing other uh, switching companies on board mm. to ensure that there, there are minimal disruption it's not like there won't be, like I said, the there, is no, there is no system manageable. There is no system that doesn't have its own challenges. Just mm -hmm. like if you're going again on the road with 200,000 naira cash, all right? Mm -hmm. somebody, may, somebody may just approach you, mm -hmm. okay, and make away with the money. It's also a loss that you can never recover. You understand mm -hmm. it? So it will happen, but gradually, you see, gradually, improvement will be seen in those areas. I remember when ATM came the first time. I was one of the people that said I will never use that machine. <laughs> Me. Are you serious? Yes. For a oh, very long, yes. Well you see that is what change. Yes. That is what change will always bring. When when you're changing from what you are already used to, accustomed to, to a new reality. There is that tendency as human changing for from, us to changing to from analog to, yes, to resist, <laughs> digital. To resist, you know, then okay. I was even in the banking industry. For for example, they gave us ATM. I, I said I won't use it, and I did not use it for a very long time. But today, mm. today, it's I can't become part and parcel of you. I can't even imagine myself <laughs> without walking it. into the banking hall to go and say I want to sign this. No. Mm. I transact on the ATM now. So that tells you that the difficulties we are facing now to embrace this new, new, uh, this change, we fizzle out with time. And as we continue to, you know, move along this line, there will be more investments 
that will take care of all these challenges. Okay, um, as an expert, it is important for us also to get your views. Of course, some Nigerians there give their advice, one or two, uh, to government on what they are expecting. Like some have said that they should even change the faces of the people on the Naira. Why have they continued to be the one there and all of that? Uh, what advice will you be given to the Apex Bank uh, at this moment in time? I mean, in regards to... Uh, getting quality service and uh, the quality of the money and the availability of these uh, Naira notes. Okay, so I think I'm more concerned about the value of the currency than the aesthetics, the okay. beauty. I mean, a beautiful Naira note mm -hmm. that, that, that has that? no value <laughs> is worthless. Yes. So I think we should rather focus more on ensuring that this government Mm. or whichever government that is coming after this government, okay, will not continue on this part of systematic devaluation of our currency. Mm. Because we are not a net exporter of goods and services. So when you devalue, you hurt yourself more. But the devaluation was necessary for this government because when you devalue and you assess foreign loans, okay, you change those loans to Naira, it becomes big money. But again, in paying back, it becomes another problem. So they should stop devaluing our currency. Nigerians, it is not the beauty of our notes that is important. It is what the notes can get us. And what we can get with our notes is a function of the value. What is the relative exchange of uh, Naira to other currency? Okay? Uh, purchasing power parity that is what we should be particular about and any government that is toying with our currency by consistently devaluing our naira for no serious economic reason is hurting us so even if they bring a naira that has 12 colors you know 12 colors will be so beautiful <laughs> rainbow <laughs> <laughs> rainbow color and it is still uh, 1000 naira to one dollar or 2,000 Naira to $1, mm -hmm. it makes no sense. I think, not holding forth for CBN, I think what they try to do this time around is to reduce the color. You see, in printing, the more colors you have, mm -hmm. the higher the cost of printing. Of anyway, until they also reveal to us the cost of printing this Naira note. Mm -hmm. That has not been made public. I expect that the cost of printing this Naira note would be significantly lower because you have dropped the colors and when you drop mm. colors common sense tells you that it will now be cheaper to print and reprint so let's just take the naira, naira note the way it is and focus on the value the value is what is important okay um talking about naira to um, naira to dollar now the naira to dollar we know what it is now i think it has risen to 745 naira in the black market and um, with these new notes do you really think it addresses that can it possibly address it talking about value no you, you see um the new naira note is not meant to address such um, issues in short the new naira note does not necessarily have a direct impact or effect on the inflationary pressure that we are facing. Though in the long run, if we all accept to move away from cash economy to cashless, to cashless economy, our monetary policy will become potent. Okay. In which case, whatever government desires to achieve using the monetary policy instruments, it then becomes effective. Mm -hmm. But for now, we are just where we are. Hmm. Just, However, okay. <laughs> you see, the, your, your exchange rates uh, is a function of so many things. Mm -hmm. Number one, what and what do you produce at the sport? You it's, always say that. It's, it's, yeah, it's very simple. A country that is not a particular about production. We are net importers. What do we expect? You are net importers and when you import, you need the same foreign exchange to so pay for those goods abroad. So if you are always paying and not receiving as much as you are paying, then your balance of trade will always be in deficit. And if your reserve 
is not is not robust. There is no way your currency will have that strength. However, in our own case, it's self-inflated. Why are we still maintaining a dual exchange rates? Why do we still have a window where some people can get naira at four thirty? Mm -hmm. And another window where they can sell the same naira at, at 7.45. <laughs> so you find out that what manufacturers labor for one year, the level of profit that a manufacturer that employs Nigerians will labor from January to December, someone that is connected to the powers that be can make that money in one day yes. by simply getting a location from CBN at 4.30. And then selling at, at the parallel market as well for oh my rent goodness. Oh my goodness. Ah, Gotta help Nigeria. <laughs> uh, lastly, before I let you go, um, talking about the counterfeits of the new Naira notes, how best do you think um, the government or say the uh, financial authorities can deal with this? It's now a major problem. Okay, it's not a major problem and it's going to rub off on general acceptability of this new mm. If the general acceptability is low, this policy is going to fail and it will create more hardship for the people. Because now there is fear. I don't know if the one you're giving to me, except probably uh, the one that is coming out exactly. from Bank ATM, I'll pick it. So mm. if you keep on with this, uh, it, fact that fake notes are everywhere. Hmm. So if I come to your business premises and pay you with new notes, you may likely reject it. it. Hmm. So CBN needs to, as a matter of urgency, urgency True. begin to talk to Nigerians. There is nothing stopping them from. We have we have a like like a station and other stations. Awareness program can be engaged. Mm. You know to to enlighten the public consistently and constantly mm. push out aggressive information. Aggressive. Um, that is the only way to kill all this disinformation. If they feel that no no, but you said disinformation. Uh, we have people who have um, justified this fake money. You yes. know. Uh, I mean, when you touch it, especially the round pass where you have like a stamp or something, when you touch it like this, it's spilling. Of course, you know, the, the criminal enterprise, they always, they always want to be a step ahead oh, 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 of... Or even what 10 they, steps ahead. Of whatever you do. So, now they've seen the new notes. Mm. So, but how can CBN call it at the moment? Because, um, I mean, making um, enlightening Nigerians now might not... Anyway, if they enlighten them about the fake it and the help. original, then it goes a long way, too. It, it, it will help. Mm. It will help. And for those that um, their businesses are still cash dependent, mm. please endeavor to get a UV light. So that in, exactly. when people come to buy things, if you are in doubt, you can just slide it under the UV light mm. and you see those securities. But again, mm. of course that what, comes with again, another. <laughs> again, what security am I going to be looking out for? Mm. CBN needs to talk to, to people. Nigerians. You see, I think the, the basic thing now, first of all, is the information. Mm. If the information is not out there, you can imagine now that information about the fake notes is even more prominent than, than information the, of the original the notes. notes. Mm. So you that have not seen the original Naira notes, mm. you are already talking about not fake. Fears. How do you even know the fake when you have not seen the original? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't know. I think um, this would be a, a good time to call it a day. Uh, but before we go, um, what uh, specific advice will you give to uh, businessmen and women, especially those doing into petty trade and what of you? Okay, so... Um, change is the only thing that is constant in life and um, we cannot continue to do the same thing and expect different results. Nigeria is not experiencing economic development and there are reasons, there are factors why this is so. Apart from the human interplay, corruption and so on and so forth, we need a sound financial system. We need a sound financial system to be able to, you know, push this economy 
to where we all desire it to be. So this policy, yes, may come with some cost. We create some distortions in our businesses, in our personal finances. But we should understand that, you know, uh, there is this saying that Rome was not built in a day. Yeah. After all, our forefathers did not mm -hmm. own cars, they did not drive cars. And look at us today. Well, look at us today. <laughs> we're we're, we're even flying planes. Exactly. <laughs> so these are changes mm -hmm. that would naturally happen from time to time. Mm -hmm. Remember when GSM came? There was nothing like smartphone. Honestly. Today, I doubt if any, but most, most people have their offices on their palms now, their phones. True. But if that GSM, that, if that service did not come into this country, today we will still not be talking on smartphone. Thanks to the ambassador regime. Exactly. But because we now have an efficient telecommunication system, people started thinking, can we create a smartphone? Can we create data services? Mm -hmm. You see, all these things are now coming. Mm -hmm. But when GSM was launched immediately, mm -hmm. if it had been rejected, it was just voice and test. Mm -hmm. Today now we have data. Today Video. Have of <laughs> so just be patient. This policy will work itself out. Mm -hmm. And it is it is the best thing that CBN mm -hmm. has given to this country. Quite interesting. Wow. <laughs> you know what you just explained now just, uh, you know, uh, refreshing my memory. It took me back to the days when I was at the Polytechnic in Badon. You know those days when the GSM just came out. You need to climb on mountains on the rock. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to pass information to your parents at home, yeah. especially when you are broke. So anytime you go out like that to call, it must have been <laughs> that you're broke as a student. And God help you, the wind is not blowing towards your direction. <laughs> There's no way you want to get your parents. <laughs> you want to get them, you know, well, that's quite interesting. And I think this is a good place to leave it. Uh, Austin Adegoy, many thanks for coming in Super Eye. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me say to my viewers, I hope that we've had a, a very good time together. And it's always a very good time when we have our own economist, Austin Adigwe, because he knows how to do justice to the topic of discussion. Well, viewers who have heard for business, uh, men and women out there, all of the fears, like he said, uh, in no time we fizzle out. However, uh, let us prepare ahead of this January uh, 31st deadline. We are hopeful, and as Nigerians, you know that we always uh, build on hope, and hopefully, uh, we will not be disappointed. And uh, let me also state here, you know, we were supposed to join uh, Dr. Muda Yusu, but unfortunately with Port Network, we couldn't. Most likely, uh, we'll be able to bring him uh, next week. So let's keep it late again. I'm Adenike Oweye Ajiboye. Remember, you can watch uh, this edition and other uh, programs of Super Eye on our YouTube channel. Uh, well, it's a bye for now. Thank you.